Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Shrek Gaming City Com video, we're going to be discussing tech news which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with AMD and the Zen 2 architecture, and how AMD are planning to drastically improve performance for the next iteration of the Ryzen range of processors, plus, of course, support developers for increasing workloads across multiple processor cores. Then we'll move over to another piece of AMD news, and that is the motivations, desires, and design process of Threadripper. And then we're going to finish the video with Intel, specifically that DeBauer, who of course is a very well-known overclocker, has successfully delidded a 12 to 18 core um, Skylake X processor, and the fact that these CPUs are not indeed soldered. But we'll go into that last. First thing first, as I said, is AMD and Zen 2. So I'm going to read out parts of the interview because it's pretty lengthy. I'll link the original source, which was Joker Productions. As I said, if you want to go ahead and check that out, feel free. So this is going to be more of analysis of what was said. Uh, Don Walsh-Groski, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, is the desktop CPU marketing manager over at AMD. And he said that Ryzen was the worst case scenario. It was a brand new architecture and a completely brand new node. So the worst case scenario we could have possibly had, and it's pretty good, you can get over four gigahertz. As a slight aside, yes you can, but not much higher. It's, you know, obviously it does depend on cooling and silicon lottery, but generally four to 4.2 is typically the clock speed most people are gonna get, unless they're, you know, really trying to tweak quite considerably. Uh, we're definitely working on improving. Our engineers are really smart guys, and we are looking to get better as we go along. I can't talk specifics on IPC, but that's an area of focus. We've got the head, the clock speed headroom to take advantage of, and we've got tweaks to make sure performance at each clock is getting better. Obviously, that's a pretty damn good thing, because if they can tweak the clock speeds, let's, for sake of argument, say that they can get an extra 10, 20% on clocks. Let's say that they're, you know, the low end of 4 gigahertz. Let's say 4.2 is, you know, the standard uh, CPU clock speed without overclocking. Maybe 4.4, but, but more realistically, let's say 4.2. Plus, they can increase IPC perhaps a little more, maybe 10-ish percent, 15, 20%, depending on what their roadmaps and what they can realistically squeeze out of it perhaps we'll see improvements to for example for avx uh, 512 which is definitely one area that they could improve it's hard to argue that intel will be under a hell of a lot of pressure they also stated that they want to push the market which they feel they've already done i'd concur with that personally into giving everybody more cores and more threads and obviously if you can do that then developers feel free to well basically push the boundaries now, obviously, CPUs are at a premium, in terms of CPU cores, at a premium for a myriad of different tasks. It's not just a simple case of, hey, we can draw landscapes with better detail, or hey, we've got more C uh, CPU cores to take advantage of to push more work to the graphics card. It's actually a lot more complex than that, including, but not limited to, bigger game worlds, which we kind of just touched upon, uh, improvements to artificial intelligence, which could be anything from how you respond, learning your behavior as a player, down to better pathfinding, improvements in physics. Yes, some of this stuff is being leveraged by the GPU, but the CPU still does an awful lot. And, you know, even little things like, you know, oh, I don't know, streaming assets, loading game levels, in other words, basic game logic. Finally, um, in terms of optimizing the games, Don also says that they are working to optimize games which have already been released as well as future projects. Essentially, they want to engage with the developer, figure out what's going wrong, why the code isn't running as smoothly as it should, and then essentially improve that performance. Now, to be fair, on the channel, we've done a couple of tests. Um, for example, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Rise of the Tomb Raider improved drastically when the developers decided to release a patch. Now, that patch did pretty much what you would expect a patch to do when it's aimed at improving performance. It did so, but drastically. Now, that's not to say that AMD are all positive and all sweet and roses. Obviously, there are certain games which just plum do not run as well on AMD hardware at the moment, and the meager clock speeds, at least compared to some of the higher-end uh, clocked Intel parts, for example, let's, let's say the 7700K, do put AMD at a disadvantage in some instances, but perhaps in the future as games go wider, in other words, they push more threads, this is going to change. 
Next up, we're going to discuss Fred Ripper. Now, I have to confess, Fred Ripper has been very successful, and one can make an argument that yes, it has actually beaten Intel at its own game in the HEDT market. Yes, there are certainly advantages of Intel in certain applications, but the fact that AMD are planning to release an update which allows, for example, RAID 0, RAID, well, up to RAID 10, basically, uh, for SSDs for free, which is something Intel don't do, that you have to buy a dongle. The fact that you've got a ludicrous amount of CPU cores and threads available. Yes, Intel do technically have more with the 7980XE, but obviously you're paying a massive premium. So AMD have certainly pipped Intel to the value proposition post. And there's a very interesting interview actually conducted by two individuals. The first is Sarah Youngbauer from AMD, and the second is James Pryor. I shall link this interview, just like the previous uh, bit of information, in the video description. Now, what's very interesting about this is that the team essentially decided to work on Fred Ripper almost as like a side project. And it essentially was like a passion project. They, they were working on it for about a year before they got the green light from management to actually pursue it. And there were around 20 or 30 of these people working on this process, as I said, on the side. And it wasn't until Computex 2016 that James Pryor was in the cab with Jim on the way to Computex 2016. Excuse me, uh, his boss was in a cab with Jim on the way to Computex 2016. And then essentially uh, it, Fred Ripper was mentioned and basically gave them the green light. And then what happened was basically they married the two technologies, which of course was Ryzen and Epic, for the HEDT market. So just to clarify, according to John Taylor, only Epic and Ryzen were originally planned, which is quite crazy when you consider just how successful and how much critical acclaim Fred Ripper has brought to the table. So originally, in the 2017 AMD product roadmap, only Ryzen 3, 5, and 7, which of course ranged from 4 to 8 cores, plus Epic, which naturally extends from 8 to 32 cores, were actually in existence. And then, eventually, thanks to some individuals who joined the team, and they actually, ironically enough, were from the press themselves, they basically pushed um, the management and the development team to say, hey, this would be a really cool side project. And the crazy thing is, and this is pretty damn crazy, it was actually kept pretty damn secret until May 2017. And by August, it was in people's hands. So let's just appreciate how quickly this was turned about. In terms of development time, it's, it's very damn impressive. Now, essentially, as you probably are aware, Epic is almost just a rewired version of Threadripper, or I guess vice versa is the technically correct answer. And what they said is they desired to make Threadripper the best, of course that is the PR uh, answer, and said that they aim to have XFR speeds at at least 4.2 gigahertz and an all-core boost, the same as the Ryzen 7 to 1800X, but of course double the number of cores available. And what's very interesting is they also state that they'd learned a lot about the memory impact of um, games when it comes to timings, latency, and sheer clock speed on Ryzen. So one of the reasons they actually added this mode was to leverage this and make it as fast as possible. Now, this is a much longer interview than one I'm giving them credit for, but I just kind of wanted to read out a few highlights and give my opinions on this, and I think it's bloody impressive. And honestly, it shows that AMD have the skill to dynamically work and make the best out of limited R&D budgets, which is kind of one of their fortes as a company. Now, that's not to say that Threadripper is perfect. It does have some negative aspects. As I said, in games, it doesn't perform quite as well as perhaps Intel. And let's just be honest, though. If gaming is your primary concern and you don't do much productivity work, you're not really going to be looking to buy, let's say, a 1950X solely for that use. But I think the fact that AMD are pretty nimble and the fact that they can design things so easily and the fact that they've got pretty damn good um, 
return on investment per processor core that's created. In other words, their production costs of Zen is actually not that much. I think this is the reason they're able to undercut Intel. And this is a good thing, because Intel honestly needed a slap upside the noggin. That's not to say that I don't want Intel to come back, and obviously we're going to be seeing what coffee they can bring to the table later this year, but that's kind of swings and roundabouts, isn't it? That's actually a positive thing, and back, and I've said this a couple of times before, back in the day, you know, with the, the, the Athlon processors, uh, this even includes up until, like, the Athlon uh, X2s, the early X2s, they were very, 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 very competitive with Intel. No one thought, for example, the first Athlons were going to be able to beat, let's say, the Pentium 3s. Well, AMD proved them wrong. So I think this is just a case of AMD jumping back to the forefront and saying, hey, we're back. And that's a damn good thing for the industry. Last piece of news, and this comes from the well-known overclocker, De Bauer. He's managed to get himself... Um, a sneaky peek of early engineering samples of Intel's upcoming 12 to 18 core i9 Skylake processors. And he basically used the DLID Dimate X tool, which is something, of course, that he's created. Uh, the purpose of this, of, naturally, is to DLID the processors. The good news is that the processor can indeed be deleted. So, you know, it hasn't bought the CPU, it hasn't made it, you know, split into a thousand different pieces. Good news. And the actual die size is certainly a much more, um, a simple word would be hefty. And while the Bauer himself has not officially confirmed this, if you just quickly examine the die itself, it appears, just from the fact that it's very smooth, that, well, it's not soldered, which is not ideal. Of course, if you want to delid up to like a 2000 US dollar processor, that's kind of down to you because you can't just be like, you know, if you overclock it and you maybe overvolt it, you can be like, eh, it was broken when I got it. Without a question, delidding obviously is the best way to go with Skylink X, but obviously I'm not here to recommend you do that if you're even slightly uncomfortable doing it to your new shiny up to 2000 US dollar processor. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'm going to be around the next couple of days i am starting to do my rx vega 56 testing i literally have the card sitting to the left of me there is an awful lot of stuff i will be testing including but not limited to productivity testing there will be some undervolting testing i know many of you have asked me to do that overclocking testing and a whole bunch more so you know that's going to start trick trickling excuse me over the next couple of days with all of that said hopefully you have enjoyed the video no more stuff like share subscribe give me the internet power and uh, if you feel like it you can check out our patreon which is linked in the video description you don't have to donate by any stretch of the imagination but if you fancy it you know kick us a dollar and i would be greatly appreciative anyway with all of that said take care of yourself have a great day bye for now